Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're going to continue talking about statistics, but more specifically, we're going to talk about measures of center and variability. So after we ask a statistical question, then we can actually collect some information about all of that data. Typically, we start by looking at how many observations or the number of data points that we have. Another important piece of information is the mode, which is the most common occurring number. While in some cases, we'll just have one mode, in other cases, we'll have multiple modes, or even sometimes, no mode. Then we can identify what the minimum or the smallest data point is of the data set. This is going to be the least value. Following, we can identify the maximum, which is just the biggest or greatest data point in the data set. Once we identify what the minimum and maximum are, we can then find the range. This is just going to be the distance between the minimum and maximum. Now comes the median. This one's going to require a little bit more work here. The median is just the middle number of a data set. Typically, we'll order all the observations from least to greatest or greatest to least, doesn't really matter, and then it's going to be the middle number, where 50% of the data is below it and 50% of it is above it. Then we have the mean, and this is the average of the data set. To find the average, we'll add up all of our observations and then divide it by the number of observations, but we'll get more into that in a little bit. And finally, the most time-consuming one, we have the mean absolute deviation. This is going to be the mean distance, or average distance, of each data point from the mean, or the average. Throughout the rest of this video, we're going to focus on these eight different concepts and how we can use them to represent data after we ask a statistical question. From these eight different concepts, three of them represent measures of center. We have mode, median, and mean. On the other hand, two of these concepts represent measures of variability. We have range and mean absolute deviation, or MAD for short. Now that we've done a little overview, let's get into some more details. To find the number of observations, you just have to count the number of data points you have, or typically the number of numbers you have. To find the mode, we're going to look for the most occurring number or numbers, and it's possible to have no mode if they're all tied for being the most or the least. Finding the minimum requires minimal work because you just have to look for the smallest data value or the smallest number. Similarly, to find the maximum, you're just going to have to look for the biggest value or the biggest number. Now, while the first four measures didn't require any calculations, the range is the first one where we need to. To find the range, we just take the maximum value and subtract the minimum value from it. While a large range tells us that the data is really spread out, a small range tells us that the data is very concentrated or close together. To find the median, we're going to have to do a little bit more work than the range. First, we're going to order the numbers from least to greatest or greatest to least, either one is okay. Then we'll find the middle number. Typically, people cross off numbers on the left and the right side until we get to the middle. If you have an odd number of observations, you're going to have a middle number. However, if there are two middle numbers, then just average them or find the middle between them. To find the mean or the average, first you're going to have to add up all the data values, which is just finding the sum. Then you're going to have to divide that sum by the total number of observations. Finally, we have the mean absolute deviation, or MAD, or MAD for short. This one typically makes everybody mad because of how long it actually takes to figure this out. To calculate the mean absolute deviation, or MAD for short, first we're going to have to find the mean, then we're going to have to find the deviations, which is just the distance of each data point from the mean. To find these deviations, we'll just take each observation and subtract the mean from it. After subtracting, you're going to notice that some of these deviations are positive and some of them are negative. So then to make them all positive, we're going to take the absolute value of each of these deviations. And finally, once we have a whole bunch of positive absolute deviations from the mean, we're going to take all of them and find the average or the mean of all of them. Once you take the average of these absolute deviations, you then have your mean absolute deviation. While you might be happy when you get the correct answer, you might be mad or a little bit salty because it took so long to get there. Now, I realized that was a whole bunch of talking about the concepts, but let's actually try some examples together now. If you feel like you're sort of understanding what's going on so far, feel free to give the video a thumbs up right now before we get into some examples. I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. Here's example one. Our statistical question is, how many slices of pizza did 10 different students eat in the past month? So let's say these 10 different students responded with the following number of slices they ate in the past month. To find the number of observations, we could count all the number of responses we got, or we can also just look at the question since it says that we have 10 different students. Once we know the number of observations, typically the next useful thing to do is to order the numbers from least to greatest. We have 0, then 1, 2, 4, 4, 5, 5, 7, 8, and 12. 
Once they're in order, it's a little bit easier to spot any modes that we might potentially have. In this data set, we have two fours and two fives, which puts them in first place for being the most frequent numbers. In this problem, we have two modes, four and five. And now that our observations are in order from least to greatest, we can easily see that zero is gonna be our minimum and 12 will be our maximum. Now to find the range, we're gonna just take the minimum and subtract it from the maximum. So we'll have 12 minus zero. So we find out our range here is gonna be 12. From the least amount of slices to the greatest amount of slices, the amount of slices eaten by these 10 different students ranges 12 slices. To find the median, we're gonna to try to find the middle number now. We can cross off the zero and 12, and then the one and eight, two and seven, four and five, and we're left with two middle numbers here since we have an even number of observations. Exactly between four and five is the number 4.5. If you're ever having difficulty finding that middle number, you can always just add those two middle numbers together and divide by two or find the average of them and we can find that we'll get nine over two or 4.5. To calculate the mean, we're gonna have to add up each of our observations or our values and divide by the number of numbers or the number of observations, which in this case is gonna be 10. Adding up all the slices of pizza, we get 48 divided by 10 different people. So on average, each student ate 4.8 slices in the past month. Now it's time to calculate the mean absolute deviation, where it's time to get mad. To calculate the mad, it's typically really useful to create a table to organize all our information. First, we begin by writing all our observations in one column. To the right of it, we put the mean next to each of those observations. Following, we're gonna subtract the mean, or in this case, 4.8 from each of those observations to see how far apart they are. Notice that for any of the observations or students that ate less than the average number of slices, we're gonna get a negative deviation, while the students who ate more than the average or more than 4.8 slices in a month have a positive deviation. Fun fact, if you were to add up all of these negative and positive deviations together, you should always get zero. Next, to find the absolute deviation, we're just going to take the absolute value of each of these deviations. Notice how any of the negative values just become positive and all the positive values just stay the same. Try to recall that absolute value just means how far are each of these numbers from zero. Now that we've found all our absolute deviations, we have one final step to do. We're going to take all these absolute deviations and find the average or the mean of them. To find the mean of these absolute deviations, we're gonna find the sum of them or add them all up together and divide by 10 since there are 10 different students. The sum of the absolute deviations is gonna be 26 and dividing that by 10, we get a mean absolute deviation or MAD of 2.6. What the MAD tells us is that while the average number of slices eaten was 4.8 between these 10 different students, some students ate more than that and some ate less than it but on average, they ate 2.6 slices away from the average of 4.8 slices. Just to summarize a bit, this 10 represents that there were 10 different people that were asked how many slices of pizza they ate in the past month. The four and five represent the most frequent number of slices eaten by anyone. The zero and 12 are kind of self-explanatory. Someone didn't eat pizza and someone ate 12 slices. The 12 lets us know that there was a pretty big spread uh, from zero to 12. The median of 4.5 lets us know that half of those people ate more than 4.5 slices and half of them ate less than 4.5 or 50%. The 4.8 represents the average, which is the average number of slices of pizza eaten by these 10 people. And finally, like I said just a moment ago, that 2.6 represents the average distance from the average. So on average, each of those 10 people ate 2.6 slices away from the average of 4.8 slices. Here's one more example. Our statistical question is, how many treats do eight different puppies get in one day? Of course, these puppies responded and these were the number of treats they told me they all got. If you're feeling super big brain, I encourage you to pause the video right now and try the rest of this example on your own, but otherwise, keep on playing the video and let's go over it together. Finding the observations isn't too bad. There's eight different puppies, so we have eight observations. Then just to organize the information a bit, I'm gonna order them from least to greatest. First we have two, then eight, 10, 10, 13, 15, 18, and 28. Once they're in order, it's a little bit easier to spot any modes that we might potentially have. And in this case, there are two tens and that's the only one where there's two of, so 10 is gonna be our mode here. Because there were two tens, we know that two puppies each got 10 treats in one day. Since our observations are in order, we can clearly see that the minimum is gonna be two and the maximum is equal to 28. 
To find the range, we're going to take the maximum and subtract the minimum, or 28 minus 2, so we have a range of 26 here. To find the median, let's find the middle number. We'll cross off the 2 and the 28, the 8 and 18, 10 and 15, and again we're left with two middle numbers since we have an even number of observations again. To find exactly between 10 and 13, we can just average them together or add them and divide by 2, and 10 plus 13 is 23, and 23 divided by 2 is equal to 11.5. 11.5 is our median number of treats. Then, to find the mean, let's add up all the number of treats they ate together and divide by 8 since there were 8 different puppies. The sum of all the treats is 104, and dividing that by 8 represents that the average number of treats that the puppies got, or the mean value, is 13. Now it's time for the mean absolute deviation. Here's our good old table to help us organize our information, and let's write in our observations here. Once we have our 8 observations, let's write in our mean in the next column. Subtracting our mean of 13 from each of the observations, we're going to get our deviations. Our negative deviations represent the fact that some of these puppies got less than the average, and our positive deviations represent that they got more. When we see that one of the deviations is equal to zero, that means that that particular puppy got exactly the average number of treats. Next, we're going to take the absolute value of each of these deviations, or just turn all of them positive if they're negative, and keep them the same if they're already positive. Don't forget that zero is just going to stay the same as well. Now that we have this beautiful filled in table, let's take all of these absolute deviations and find the average or the mean of all of them. Looking at these absolute deviations, you can tell that some of these puppies got very close to the average number of treats of 13, and some of the puppies got a lot more and a lot less from the average. To find out the average distance from the average or the mean absolute deviation, let's take all of these absolute deviations and find the average of them. To do so, we're going to add up all of these absolute deviations and divide by the number of observations, or 8 puppies. From that, we should get 44 over 8, or 44 divided by 8, and that's equal to 5.5, or 5.5 treats. This will be our mean absolute deviation. So while some of the puppies got a very close number of treats to the average number of treats, and some got very far, on average, the number of treats that they received was 5.5 treats away from the average number of treats of 13. Let's try to take a look at all this data plotted on a number line. Here we can clearly see that the median of 11.5 treats separates the data into two categories, the lower 50% and the upper 50%. At the top we can see the max number of treats, or 28, and at the bottom we can see the least amount of treats, or the minimum, of 2. A little above the median we can find the mean, or the average number of treats that each puppy got, which was equal to 13. While some of these deviations are on the smaller side, we do have some larger deviations, especially when we're looking at the deviations from the max to the mean and the min to the mean. While each of these observations had a different deviation from the mean, the mean absolute deviation, or the MAD, was 5.5 treats. Therefore, we can conclude that on average, each of these puppies got 5.5 treats away from the average. And that wraps up this video on how to calculate basic measures of center and variability. While the mean, median, and mode helps us identify where the center of data is, we look to calculate the range and the mean absolute deviation so we can see how much variability there is in a data set. If we calculate a pretty large range or large mean absolute deviation for a data set, it lets us know that the data is actually pretty spread out. On the other hand, if we calculate the range or the mean absolute deviation to be a pretty small number relative to the data, it lets us know that the data is actually pretty concentrated or close together. Now, if you feel like you learned something from this video, it would really help this channel out if you could go ahead and click that like button. As always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.